I recently found myself in a classic issue with my latest review device, and that would be this, the Xiaomi Mi 9. I used it so much over the last few weeks that it completely normalized as my daily driver. I did do a real life camera test with the phone out in the Great Wall of China, but aside from that specific situation, I've happily used the Mi 9 as a daily driver with no issues. I think that's both a good and a bad thing, and I will explain why as I answer the question, who is the Xiaomi Mi 9 for? Now, while there are other versions of this phone, the Dark Edition I have is a good looker that is adequately understated. I like a flashy phone, but with gaming phones starting to bring out some really crazy designs lately, I have come to appreciate a minimal aesthetic. The phone also doesn't go too far with its extras. There's an extra button to trigger assistance, and then there's no headphone jack. The notch is not large, and the teardrop design does not cut into a lot of the screen. Uh, there's no fingerprint reader on the back because it's underneath the display, and it's actually a very reliable one. The only part of this phone that is a little, let's say different, is that hollow ring around the main camera sensor. It's like Xiaomi left a reminder in the phone that says, hey, we still know how to have fun. But the other reason why I love the understated look of this device is because there's so much going on underneath the surface. I already mentioned that fingerprint reader and I actually used it just now. Um, it has a very nice animation and gets right into the operating system quickly. And then the Xiaomi Mi 9 was one of the first phones of 2019 to bring the Snapdragon 855 to the masses. Six gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of onboard storage are par for the flagship course. But I don't really think this phone is for true spec hungry people because of the aforementioned lack of a headphone jack and the uh, storage is fixed. There's no expansion via micro SD cards. Uh, I don't often knock high storage capacities, but I'm actually down to a fairly low amount of space because of that real world camera test. A place where I did get a little disappointed is in the gaming experience, or rather the lack of gaming forward features. In an increasingly crowded gaming phone market, even flagship phones are trying to put some extras in their phones for gamers. The Snapdragon 855 is great for this purpose, but there's no real push towards like big cooling systems to keep the phone from getting warm. Not that that was really much of a problem. Uh, the other thing is that MIUI is also kind of lacking in game launchers and do not disturb like features that put more of the focus on the game. I will admit that maybe this is not so much of a problem because Xiaomi invests in a big gaming brand, and that is, of course, Black Shark. But speaking of MIUI, uh, Chinese phones tend to have the kind of operating system that Android purists don't really appreciate. There's no app drawer by default, a bunch of the different design elements might overwhelm some users, and there are a ton of features that casual daily users might never actually utilize. I already mentioned that the software experience is top-notch, and this is a very smooth operating system. It almost rivals that of Oxygen OS, to be honest, in terms of how smooth it is and how good the transitions and animations are. I've had no stutters or lag in my experience. I've also actually settled into a good, comfortable daily experience with the Mi 9. Uh, once I got used to the full screen gestures and the lack of an app drawer, I found myself just not really thinking about my usage on this phone, and that's actually a good thing. But that obviously means that this phone is for Mi fans. Mi UI fans are going to live and die by this storied operating system. And it wasn't until recently that I understood why. There are a ton of different apps in this OS that are squarely for Mi users and Mi fans. I couldn't even jump into these particular apps because I live in the US, but there is of course Mi Pay, the Mi Store, Mi UI's own user experience program in the form that leads to new features on the regular. You get updates on Mi UI pretty regularly. And then there are all of the Xiaomi products that integrate with the centerpiece smartphone. The new wireless charger is the fastest one out there and only works with the Mi 9 currently for fast charging. I also love the Mi Bands. I think you've heard me talk about the Xiaomi Mi Bands and this is the Mi Band 3 in particular. And of course, it fits well with the Mi 9. Xiaomi is an ecosystem and Mi stores are starting to pop up in more and more places with the fan base growing each time one opens up. Okay, normal, wide, 48, normal, wide, 48. Video, selfie, normal, wide, 48. If you really want to get the most out of the Mi 9 and its camera array, that might actually become your workflow. And for stills photographers, there is a lot of fun to be had here. This new Sony IMX 48 megapixel sensor brings high levels of detail that is easy to see when you compare them to the 12 megapixel original photos. The detail is really pleasing, even if the general processing is not exceptional. Colors can use a little extra oomph. The wide-angle camera is really wide, adding drama to just about any scene. It is nice that these two modes, 48 and wide, are buttons on the viewfinder and are easy to trigger because I kept going back and forth between them. Even portraits get a little bit of extra love. The third camera is a telephoto lens, which helps get a tighter frame. This is the only real use for a telephoto in my usage, and then I got a surprise when I found the normal lens being used for what is called a whole body portrait. We all know someone who demands you to step back a little so they can get your whole body in the frame. It's nice to have as a mode though, uh, even though the cutouts are still about as bad or as inconsistent as any other conventional portrait mode out there. 
Still photographers get some love, but vloggers kind of don't. The wide angle mode can be used for video, and I hope you saw what I used it for. Video on the Mi 9 isn't necessarily bad, though a higher bitrate would have been appreciated to combat some of the noise I found in certain clips. My biggest gripe with the video though was audio. You can check out my video at the Great Wall of China to actually hear it. The phone sounds just fine when I'm using it for phone calls and voice messages, but it has been one of the poorest performers in video recording. A vlogger's phone out of the box, this is not. But then you get those trade-offs, and of course, Xiaomi knows exactly how to price their phones with those trade-offs. Now, they prove every single year that you don't have to have high price points to provide good daily experiences. That is again true for the Mi 9, which has already been out for in, in a few markets, including India under the equivalent of 600 US dollars. Think about it. You're getting the Snapdragon 855, the new 48 megapixel camera sensor, uh, fast wireless charging, and an easy to handle body in the Xiaomi Mi 9. Generally, Xiaomi flagships have few compromises and the Mi 9 continues that tradition. But it's also a tradition of Xiaomi's to not make these phones available in the US and any other Western markets. This is still a bummer, because if Xiaomi could find a way to bring that affordable price point to the masses here in the West, I'm sure phones like this would sell quite well. It's a bit of a cliche at this point to lament the fact that phones like the Mi 9 never really make it to Western shores. And so there you have it, the Xiaomi Mi 9. The biggest endorsement I can give this phone is that I took so long to review it because I was simply using it. It's a pitfall that us tech reviewers can experience. We get too comfortable using any one device that we forget to do content on it. But that just means that the lean outside and the reliable inside prove to be an easy daily driver. And in the end, isn't that really the point? I'm glad to finally get the review on the Mi 9 done, but I want to know what all of you think about Xiaomi's latest flagship. Let me know if there are any users that you think I missed in this video and post them in the comment sections down below. Stay tuned to my channel for even more, and until the next video, I'll just remind you to enjoy your tea, everybody. Oh, I left the tea over there. Normally I sip it at the end of the video, but oh well. Enjoy your tea, everybody.